way back we've been friends since way back made in since way back how it's been since way back since back then can't change that we've been but yeah that that is definitely an interesting commercial for that uh I will say that I had seen it, but I didn't pay as much attention to it as I was this time. Just because okay. uh, I was looking for things that I might have seen in other comics. So, like, they have a character from one of them, which is the... I forget his name, but it's the goldfish dude. Um, okay. Yeah, it's like a guy who's basically a goldfish in a bowl. But he's, like, on top of a like robot kind of body. It's actually not a robot body, I believe it was something else, but in the comic. But it might, they might change it, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, welcome back to Comic Convos, everybody and their peeps if they showed, and if not, hopefully next time. Uh, but today is going to be a fun one, man. I think that that Umbrella Academy looked really good. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited for it. I was uh, I was a fan of the first one, and uh, first season, and uh, really just enjoyed it. It was just, you know, something different to watch than the normal kind of superhero movies that we've kind of gone for known sure. to watch all, for all sure the time. it um, uh it breaks out of the mold you know what i mean um in a way that it's not like you said we've now that we've had superhero movies for 20 years ish we've got like a formula right the marvel formula the dc formula whatever the superhero formula is kind of in there and and luckily we have shows like umbrella academy or the boys and even in my opinion stuff like legion which break out of the typical superhero style of movies while still maintaining true to the core of what a superhero movie is, being about a superhero or a supervillain. But yeah, yeah they, they definitely they get, you know, it can get repetitive when you get that same heroes win, you know, all good guys are doing good things, you know, it, it, the... the you want to have a little variety in your superheroes, and they do that a lot in the boy, uh, the boys, and Umbrella Club. But I feel yeah, like this I can't wait for the boys. that one's gonna be great. I feel like we haven't seen as much though. Like it's funny. The well, I feel like that commercial I, uh, for the Umbrella mm-hmm. Academy has given us way more of a look into how it's going to look as a season than the boys did. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a I did watch post a movie clip for uh, for the boys. Fandango actually uh, posted it, but uh, I think it's actually the first episode. But uh, we get to see a little bit of more of the character we didn't see from the first season. What was his name? Black um, Noir. Yeah, yeah, Black Noir. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're, uh, already he was uh, kind of seeing him in action, and uh, he was uh, pretty gruesome <laughs> for the uh, yeah they first sh- three minutes. Uh, they said they were going to go even more. Like if they, you said. Uh, they yeah, said I told the you they was going to be. Bad, they're going to even go wor- uh, The thing is, the first season was, uh, like, uh, not as... But they definitely toned down the first season from what happens oh, yeah. in the comics, like, a lot. Yeah, and I heard that they were like- going to, like, bump it up in the second season. And, I mean, their original trailer for the second season, which is only, like, 30 seconds, is pretty gruesome. There's a bunch going on. It's just very fast, so it doesn't stay yeah. on screen all the time. But uh, they, they usually do, and I have seen that one where they released for Noir. There's a lot of good stuff going for it. But even then, that's what I mean. Is like that's that clip of Noir was good. It shows you him, but it doesn't show you the like even the same thing for like the Stormfront one. That's a whole clip of like two or three minutes of us like talking with Stormfront and them on the military base. But it doesn't actually like give you an idea of what the plot is going on behind it, following the end of the last yeah, season. Yeah. Like we don't know yeah. what's going on. For instance, like so spoilers for people, but it's been however long since the boys came out. Uh, we we talk. We got to figure out what's up with Homelander's kid, the the new relationship with Vod America, whatever it may be, because he just you know went off on a tangent at the end of last season, mm-hmm. and just straight uh, murdered a couple people, which I mean he's like to do anyway. But I, I mean just just a lot of stuff like that had open ended like things that have to be addressed in the next season. Mm-hmm. But that they they have definitely not given us, which is it, you know it could be a good or a bad thing. I'm not saying it's good or bad that they have showed us this or not showed us this, but I'm just saying that's being the difference is the uh, like what's actually going on in the boys. We have no clue for the next season. We know that they're trying to be in the military, and that that's about the sum of it. But like the actual little plot details are not in there, which is fine. 
You know what I mean? A little bit surprised, so we'll see. Yeah, Hopefully, it'll be uh, cool. Once again, it's not like it's good or bad. That's just the difference I noticed from the two is like the that uh, trailer for Umbrella Academy is really like, all right, so here's what we're doing. This is an explanation of the people that were here last season. You know what I mean? Very much less of the general, like, of concerted view, right, of, like, a full two minutes, but more so hitting, like, the very hot points of what the next season will be about. Mm-hmm. Having so, said that, it's... Oh, shoot, drop when? September? Probably, I think. Let's double check. Uh, we'll check for both of them, actually. Hopefully they don't get pushed back. So, season two is supposed to release July 31st for Umbrella Academy, and then yeah, I, mean, I think the boys is September. Yeah, the boys is September yeah. 4th. Okay. Which, it's a little farther away, but we've ago, actually yeah. been getting trailers from the boys from before we were getting stuff from Umbrella we, Academy. Yeah. We've already gotten two or three little things counting black noir the stormfront one the original 30 second teaser or like a minute teaser however long it was there's probably even more but even with that's what i mean is even with uh all that we haven't gotten like a a decent idea of how our characters are going to interact whoops in the next one which is, yeah. is it's going to be a super surprise and i'm excited because i've read the comics and they're different anyway so i'm surprised anyway but I'm, I'm excited to see how they do this season as opposed to last season. If they try to go more towards what there was in the comic or less towards what it was in the comic. Because they were both good. They are both great. I'm just curious on what they're going to try to do. Oh, oh. Everything. There we go. Um, so, with, um, I guess... Was there supposed to be Ubisoft is supposed to do their live stream? Was it today or for uh, Far Cry, or just for uh, in general? I think they're just doing like a live stream of just like a bunch of stuff that they're. Uh, you know, it's, there's be. no. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There, because there's no uh, E3 or anything, or anything like yeah. That. Which is so interesting to me because now everyone's gonna have to do it themselves. Which, yeah, it'll be all right. I mean, like, Nintendo does it anyways. They do their yeah. Nintendo Direct. Actually, I missed that one too, um, but. They just released that they're supposed to be dropping um, Donkey Kong Country for the Switch. So um, I really like Nintendo, original. but sometimes they spend too much time on old titles. I was kind of excited to put some Donkey Kong. Donkey cause Kong's they had to cool because Donkey Kong on their uh, Switch and uh, yeah, I was there was some okay well, games that they're on their list, but I was like, mm, you guys could improve that list. And the thing is that the websites finally. have more than the things, which is sad. You know what I mean? That websites yeah. will have more than the the. Oh actual. yeah, no, no, no. But, but it's just I mean, nice uh, to be able to play right there on my console. And for just, like, sure, old school original. Oh yeah. Games. But uh, and Donkey Kong um, not, is one of the titles. <laughs> yeah, and Donkey Kong is one of the titles that is actually cool to get a re a re up because even though they've done it before, it's been a while since the last Donkey Kong game. You know what I mean? When yeah, was the last? That was the tropical freeze. I I mean was, more in the sense the of game. like yeah, and I mean more along the sense at least for me uh, along like Mario gets two or three games a year, a racing game, Mario uh, party, and then a random Mario Maker now because now there's not just a Mario one; it's like make your own Mario oh, level you stuff. Got your Paper Mario coming out. Yep, there, I, like I said, that's my thing. How many titles are they gonna put into Mario before they give us more new stuff? I know, Mario, I know. Mario. <laughs> Mario. It's like Mickey Mouse, man. You can't get... <laughs> you can't get... And I like Mickey mouth. Mouse, but... I, I like new stuff, too, man. I want... The yeah, same for, yeah. like, the new heroes in Marvel and DC and stuff, where they don't get the... In Marvel, people will complain one way or another, because I, I also feel that way, like, they didn't make new heroes for Marvel. They just made new versions of old heroes, which yeah. did and didn't work. Yeah, there was some characters that yeah were okay and that did do a good job. But like I did enjoy Riri Williams. She was a pretty good character that came out of it. Um, the Amadeus Cho kind of thing was eh, didn't really care for it. Um, the what was it? The Captain America Falcon. Falcon. That was okay. That was all right. Um, what else did they change? And then uh, there was a couple other things they changed. I can't remember. This Marvel. The characters were. Oh, Miss Marvel. Which is the only one that's kind of stuck. Yeah, yeah, which but, is, she's a good character. I do like that one. Um, 
Yeah, but just yeah, those. Uh, like, then so uh, the all new uh, Spider Spider Man, uh, Miles Morales. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's he's a good. He's one of the ones that stuck around, but he's the same. He's very much a new age character, even though he came in the Ultimate Universe. He's just mm-hmm. a new hashing of an old character. Mm-hmm. He's different, um, but yeah, um, he uh, he's been getting really popular these last couple. Uh, oh, I mean, he's super this, this last this last month actually. He's um, super popular, and he's super. He sells well. He's a good character. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it's just now that the game is well, coming out for him. People, are, oh my gosh! I think well, we talked really about it. Who is it? Isn't it Bendis? Yeah, Bendis is the one. Yeah, and we've talked about that. Happened. Bendis is pretty good at making new characters. Maybe not yeah. writing for all characters, but it's him so and sad. and I mean, it Superman, was. Um, I don't think was his best one, was it? <laughs> I I really enjoyed all the Rogue Zar stuff. Like yeah, that one's pretty cool. I've heard, but some people I heard were not feeling Bendis doing Superman. Dude, everyone was really mad, but no one ever like points out something that Bendis did that pisses them off for Superman to me. Like I always see like Bendis sucks on Superman. And I'm like, all right, well why? Like what did he what did he do? Because a lot of his stuff he did, but it wasn't him. So like, mm-hmm. role goes are right. He did that, and you have uh, his. Uh, then they also saved Jor El. Like he's no longer dead or whatever. But that was Dr. Manhattan. That was the tie-in with Doomsday Clock. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of the Shears artists... Thing kind of messed it up. I feel like a lot of her <laughs> stuff... Yeah, I mean, two years, there's no tracking with that. Originally, it was like a year, and you know what I mean? They would help sync up, and you would have been having things revealed near similar times. So like you would have been revealing the fact that... So, for example, uh, you got... Manhattan taking people captive, right? Which was a big part of that. In fact, it was so big, it was tied into the Batman series. Because they had uh, Tim Drake there. I don't know if you've ever read those two in top. but So Tom King gets a lot of the same shit, right? He gets shit for that series. Now, he probably deserves a little more. But once again, I almost never hear people tell me what it is about his series that they didn't like. And I think it's once again those unresolved ties where these things were tied together at the same time and we're all releasing roughly around the time of Doomsday Clock. Granted, Tom King continues on after and same for Bendis. And it's not I'm not saying that their runs are good either. I'm just saying mm-hmm. that you gotta consider what was going around going on at the same time that had a negative mm-hmm. impact on their run. Let's see. Yeah, um I mean I heard people did like Tom King for you know, for a time he was good, and then like I said, it was all that one. The the marriage one really, really killed. Yeah, that's where I think really messed that. Like I feel like right at that thing. point, everybody like and changed it wasn't their even minds. His fault. You know, that's what sucks. I think the editors fault. told him he couldn't do it. They're just like, yeah, well, no, Batman's gonna. What really work. messed it up was. Did you know that it, it got leaked? The, I do like, know that that messed it up. Before. Yeah, and that by the really cover, by off. the cover of some website posting it, where it was like Batman and Catwoman Mary. I hate leaks, man, because people. Once again, it's just little things like that where now I don't have an actual full view of what was happening. Yeah. Like whether it I mean, was a good or I, bad series, mm-hmm. people have a skewed opinion of it now because of that. And same mm-hmm. thing for uh, Superman, I think. Well, Bendis always has gotten a little up and down, I feel like. And once again, Bendis not being my favorite writer in any way or shape or anything like that. But he's okay. I mean, he's really I not just think my he's, favorite either. I think he's just good at making new characters. And Rogozar was a good example of that. He's a good character yeah. that has decent motivations he's he's got charisma and presence and then you had i forgot what the other one he made for dc one was the uh the chick uh I can't remember she remember she appeared in superman's comic for a bit hmm. i'm not too sure i know that he's they are actually taking him off here in the mm-hmm. next few issues which kind of sucks because i it, from what it sounded like when DC first signed him, it really sounded like he was good, supposed to go longer. And I, I mean, guess, I like think I said, it, yeah, that like some people aren't liking it, and not everyone's Naomi. That was it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 there we go. I just oh, it took oh, me Naomi, a second. Naomi. Right, like I said you were yeah. the one who told me about that one. That's how I was yeah. like, I know. And that actually, you know what? That was good. That was actually good. Because, Once again, you know and it, it was his own new character that he wasn't like having to write about somebody else. Or, and I think he's good, just good at writing just new characters, but. 
sometimes I don't know. Maybe he just isn't good to keep writing somebody else's character. I don't know. Maybe you know, it's it's always up and down, and people will have some people will say certain people are the favorite because I know some people who don't like Hickman, and I think Hickman's one of the best writers from comics. And, yeah, you know, so. he's good. I love his writing. I just think people don't like his uh, his. I say his pacing. When he does those um, those kind of like backstories, or what would you call them, um, in between the panels, you know, he kind of just gives you more information. Oh, you mean like the recent notes. ones from uh, X Men? Because he does that X-Men. more in X Men than I've seen him do in any of his other series. Like he'll do graphics, you know, but they're usually incorporated into his stuff on like side panel. Mm-hmm. This yeah, one, he, the yeah, X Men have had like full, sp- and I think it's because he has creative control, right? Now he's in, in charge of all the X Men, so he decides. Because I definitely agree that that can break up the flow of the story for me. Like I, I really yeah, like it in some like, cases. Oh, crap, I gotta read some damn notes. The thing, though, he- the thing is where it should be, and how he did it in House and Powers of X was perfect. He only mm-hmm. did it at the start and the end of every chapter, so it was kind of like a, an informational forward. That you could just like skip over and start the chapter, or you could read yeah. through his little notes. Uh-huh. But now, uh-huh. like like we talked about, they'll even you know they'll, they'll go from one page to the next page. It's like oh goodness, like there's some tiny writing in here. Give me a minute, get my microscope because he'll like that graphic design <laughs> stuff is beautiful. But man, sometimes yeah, it's not he, always. I guess he is the graphic designer for all. He does mm-hmm. all his gra- his own graphic designs. Yep, and um, but it's because he has a I think he has a degree in that or something. Uh. I do, I, like I said, and once again, everybody has different tastes and, and yeah, things they yeah. like. There's no perfect comic book. That's why there's nobody can say, like, I mean, you could go by numbers of sales, but nobody agrees, like, this is the best written comic or comic series or comic writer. You know, you got a lot of per- people who enjoy and will call back to classics and greats, like uh, Jack Kirby. And, you know, there are greats and greats throughout the eras but like once again a lot of if comic is art and art is subjective then you know certain people are going to like certain stories better than other people and yeah exactly yeah um i mean here's just an example of uh hickman's new book have you seen this one decorum i think you show showed me something about assassins i haven't not read it yet but like I think you just showed like, me the cover just like, for the there's, art. There's yeah. just like his, well, if I can, I'll have to probably take off the graphics. Once again, I think when he's in charge, he does a ton of, like, graphics uh, stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah that's not really, really help. That's there an interesting run on it. Let's take. There's, uh, and then he does all his little, there There we go, here's some. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the big page some, spread. Some notes some notes there for you to read about <laughs> so i mean which is cool he does I mean, that in a lot of his books and it's it's cool with me i'm fine with it just and the funny it, thing it, is he's pulling it, from like classic the reading that would be fine with me but if it does nothing for the reading or it does nothing for me the thing is even if it's the it. thing is it's got to be gra- done well right like you have this big yeah. blocky chunk of text that's n- usually not going to do well for a comic reader what you want or what like i said he would either do an old like Fantastic Four ones are kind of the new X-Men ones where it's all subject to its own thing so you can either choose to do it or not, right? You, like you said, I can choose to have it enhance my experience or choose that I don't want to use it and it doesn't enhance my experience and go past it or use it as like a ploy in the panels where it's written in in specific ways, it's done, you know what I mean? And that's that's something that he did a lot, I think, in the Fantastic Four series well, his run, but... I'm not sure, once again, I think because he didn't have full control over the Fantastic Four at that time, just that Fantastic Four series, that it was, it's going to be different for his X-Men stuff in any of his, like, solo book work or stuff where it's just, like, him doing his work and not having to, like, conform it into a Uh, universe. uh Uh-huh. Well, let's see here. If I were to go over my list of things I did read, I read... Ghost Rider number seven, which oh, is pretty that? good. Not too bad. I don't think I've I been, got to uh, Ghost Rider. I've been enjoying week. the Ghost Rider series. Um, there is this other book, uh, indie book called uh, Everglade Angels, and it's about a group of girls who are a baseball team, and um, they end up uh, going to Florida for a, kind of like a mini vacation for their game that they won, and uh, they end up uh, getting stopped by these kind of like cultists. 
and oh. <laughs> and it ends up being that the cultists uh, get it gets turned around on them, and you know these girls will not to be messed around with. <laughs> so uh, oh. yeah, it seems pretty good. It's a, it was a pretty good uh, first issue for that one. Uh, Finger Guns has been a pretty good uh, read. Um, it's about these two kids who have the ability to I guess, sh shoot with their fingers and you know um, I, change <laughs> people's emotions. That's interesting. I was about to say that's that's at least got a twist on it because I've seen the Finger Gun one in a couple ones. There's a real famous one in Japan called Jagon that he does that. Where oh, I've seen that. Yeah, I remember yep. there's like a video. Well, that one's a different one. The one you're looking at, thinking of is Inuyashika, where he walks around, he oh, goes bang, and he goes, and they just start. Yeah, 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 that's okay, Inuyashika. Yeah, that that's the, one. the one I'm talking about is actually, uh, I don't know if it has an anime yet, but it is a manga, and it's called uh, Jagon, and he literally uses his gun like hmm. an actual, or his finger like an actual gun, and something fires out of it. The, the Inuyashika one's cool, and actually has one of the only good in my opinion good live action adaptions like it's a good live action adaption it is not mediocre or passable i think it helps that inuyashika is like a high-tech science fiction manga as opposed to like a basic old school shonen but it is a very good adaption i'd say that one and bleach are probably the best two i've ever seen as far as live action adaptions of anime or manga you know what i mean I always thought the Ronin Kenshin, well, the first one at least, was really good as well. It was pretty good. I, I like that one. I think I felt like the the only reason I put Bleach above the Ronin Kenshin one was for the energy it did. Yeah. Because the that's, character that's, in Bleach who played Ichigo was very much they made it cartoony and everything. It was very nice yeah, the way they did it. Yeah, it was good. Um, let's see, Doctor Strange. I also re read the. Sorcerer Supreme. Um, uh, the Sorcerer or the Surgeon? Was, or the Surgeon. I thought Supreme, it was the Surgeon. That okay. One, that one was pretty yeah. good. Um, let's see what else we have. The Strange Academy 2, finally. Gosh, it took like almost three months to oh, finally read second Yes, issue. man. Um, I've been enjoying that one too. Uh, that's, that's being written by Scotty Young, and I've always enjoyed his writing. Um, so it's kind of like a Harry. Have you read it yet? Uh, I think I did, but it's been two or three months for the first one. Because I remember it's it with the, Voodoo and, yeah, a bunch of stuff. Kind of like going. the Harry Potter school. Yeah, yeah, it's like mages and stuff. That's why it was yeah, cool. It was exactly. it was a cool concept, and I was like, well, what? Uh, is it dead? <laughs> it's, like, that's like, it's like, no, it's not it's, dead. It's, it's just, just everything's just, yeah, taking yep. so damn long. Um, but everything hopefully should start rolling through again. Uh, DC's the one that's just been really beasting it with their... Cause they had They're putting stuff out, but the my problem is like none of the books look worth reading. <laughs> like I've looked through them, and there's anything that's not on black label and isn't Batman is is kind of like run of the mill for me. Right? Anyways, it's black label. That's stuff, that's the messed up part of the anyways. that though. It's it's like you gotta have a variety. You know what I mean? If you rely on like four or five titles, you'll you'll always stay afloat, but you're not gonna have like this huge uh a gain or anything even going to some other publisher especially because of like lunar's supposed to be covering all this but i just keep hearing people having problems with lunar <laughs> granted I, I don't know it's it i don't yeah it's kind of weird just like because everyone's half and half with it I've yeah seen some retailers say that they love the packaging job that they do the, for uh, yeah and the people i hear with them are not like mad at packaging they're mad at ability to get certain things and like they're saying it's like mm, these are the same yeah. issues we were having with diamond just with another yeah. company yeah which um, i get i know there was some weird stuff going on um with dark metals this was a speed metal is what the issue is called i can't remember but, i um, yeah it's tough for me to remember there's, all there was there's a there was a very there's a very hot artist right now of this year and she's peach momoko and I, I pick up all her artwork too but uh she was supposed to be doing and we all when it first got released dc released the image and it was uh, a variant cover but at first it you know we, we just thought it was just a regular cover so uh, all the retailers already were starting to post up all their stuff and you can start buying all the books and everything online and um, people are buying like five packs, one pack, whatever, how much ever you want. But um, so I seen them all buy them. They were just like cover price because they were they were not ratios. And that's another thing. Now uh, DC's getting in the ratio game. <laughs> 
Um, That's what I'm saying. Like, all the stuff with Lunar is starting to have the exact same problems that Diamond was having as far as not packaging, but distribution of covering, purchasing on pack bulk issues, you know what I mean, Mm -hmm. pre-orders, all those issues that I was hearing Diamond have, except for the packaging being nice, uh, Lunar are having. And then the addition of not having distribution to certain parts of the world, not having distribution to the... I don't know how it's going to end up, especially because we're not at the end of this. Uh, oh yeah, lockdown. Well, like once I, that they ends, made things a deal may with change. Diamond uh, to uh, keep continuing supporting the international people until I think the end of this year. Until I guess Lunar figures out whatever, however they're going to do it after that. Yeah. So that, I guess it gives them plenty of time to figure out a plan. I guess, but uh, you'd hope that's what they that's what they said that they that the UK people and all them should will be okay for the rest of the year. Uh, but we'll see. At the I end wonder the how but, they got that through with Diamond because um, uh, Diamond, I, yeah, right? Because okay, I guess. <laughs> is Diamond? I would have been like, yeah, pay me, uh, pay me half. <laughs> Then yeah, you can I don't get know. it. <laughs> I don't know what they did. Maybe Diamond just uh, said, you know, they didn't want to screw over the the UK or international yeah. people, and they just you never know. The thing is, like, people are them. always on Diamond, but I mean, they're they're the one we got right now, and they help keep. Yeah, they they often have helped keep these local comic book shops alive in the first place. Like deals not going through Diamond, obviously that's relative because they're just the distributor but when the whole comic industry is doing bad you know it's not like at least in comparison to what it was when it was Mm -hmm. a a booming industry and not even like super booming just like a very uh general booming industry and it's not its fault it's the same thing with newspapers you know what i mean yeah i mean there's there's not a it's it is sad you know because when I do go to the comic store and everything, I don't, you know, see a lot of like new people or anything like that. It's it's mostly the same people. I yep, see old heads again. who have who've done um, it before. Maybe, maybe they're kids. once in a while there'll be somebody new. Um, so I mean, it. I wish comics were a little bit, you know, of a bigger business, but unfortunately, not a lot of people like to do it. <laughs> I once again it's think just it's a, it's just an, a, like you know another hobby of some sort. Yeah. You know, it's not like there's there's a big uh toy collector i mean there's there's big toy collectors but like there's you know a subgroup of people and it's not like a big mainstream you know, but yeah still. i know i definitely get yeah, you yeah. and and i even meant to the point that like comic books themselves uh with the advent of internet and digital print coming out and digital distribution that that is has heavily impacted both the comics the yeah, newspapers yeah, well, so like print. digital i mean you know I, and honestly i think that probably will be the future of comics will be digital unfortunately yeah. and then you will order totally. your special cover or your your hard cover you know what i mean personally to you especially with the way things are moving right now to a more online serviceable uh, world where things are delivered over the internet or through phone Mm-hmm. that at that point your comics will come in like they come in now with your picks you know what i mean you, you order a pick and they mail you or and so as opposed to shopping in the comic store and browsing which once again browsing being some of the best part of comic book shopping uh oh, yeah yeah like flipping through the random 25 cent uh, now it's a dollar bin but or probably a dollar 50 bin but back in the day shopping through the 25 cent bin for comics was some of the fun part you're looking for a grab or a, a fun time that someone missed or just something that you didn't personally have and didn't want to go out looking for. I think that's how I got most of my... Uh, it's actually funny because it's something I'd always wanted, but I never even knew what run it was of the Wolverine series. And I found like four out of five of them, and it's the one where he loses to... Uh, fuck, what's his name? Hydra? No, it's not Hydra. Uh, Gorgon. Where he loses the Gorgon. Okay. And then they take him over and have him controlled by hand or whatever. That that one was really hard to find. What the? <laughs> that, the camera is doing weird shit, man. It, it, it acts weird sometimes. It's getting older, that's why. But yeah, the, the stuff has been doing decent for comic books. I'm happy that they're at least, you know, still coming, coming out. out and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Movies are starting to move. We've got the Umbrella... 
well, not movies, but TV shows are starting to move. Movies, it's kind of going. So much, yeah. yeah, they're we'll just too big that. for production. You have much bigger production teams for movies than you do for television shows. Mm-hmm. The, like, I mean, not always necessarily, but that's usually in general how I, how I feel about it. I mean, I don't know. The 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 tough part of it being that we're still. T- that was part of the thing is like we're now on our second wave slash second part of the first wave of our coronavirus infection and we've reshut down here in our state bars and stuff at least so i'm not sure how exactly everything is going to continue uh as is especially with people being out of work you know what i mean how you you uh extravagant economies with like uh not i can't think of the word but basically with niceties that's it with niceties like comics and tv and stuff are only possible when you have like a basic working and functioning economy and people working and going and people aren't like out on the streets or like starving to death but we're not handling our situation well so i don't know how it's going to affect our recovery towards comic books and movies next year like you said we've already been pushing stuff back for three months and then continue you know what i mean we was like well originally we were going to be good in august right or something and now it's probably looking like next year and at the end of the year it's probably going to be looking you know what i mean who knows how it's going to be looking so i'm really wondering it and hoping that it does well right that the boys and umbrella academy and stuff all comes out and it doesn't get pushed back I really just want my uh, new mutants, though. <laughs> I know. Give me my new mutants. I, I hope they don't put that on Disney Plus. That's something I wish that they. Will if they, you know what? I experience. at this point, fuck it. <laughs> 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 and at this point, out. I'm never gonna get to see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Over. the virus and die before I see this movie. No, but <laughs> no, that's messed up. But uh, yeah, that's um, that's well, craziness too. Is then. I know we got a couple things to look forward then for. I know Ubisoft is supposed to do their their kind of like digital stream reveal new stuff, yeah. and then Xbox is as well supposed to be doing, or Microsoft is supposed to be doing theirs as well um, next week too. Okay, um, we'll see how that goes. We'll hopefully, see. well, and hopefully that'll be a better unveiling of the new Xbox. Uh-huh. And then uh, I think as well, San Diego Comic Con, virtual Comic Con, <laughs> is supposed to be happening here in the next two weeks. That'll be interesting. Uh, there's uh, already a lot of comic stars that I follow. That I still feel bad because because you said panels. yeah, because I was going to say because this is the year that you had gotten and set up to go, and then they just canceled. Yeah, I mean it is smart though for San Diego to do this, and it is a good. No, idea it's a it's healthy and safe. Now they can yeah. go ahead and sell some of the stuff that they were supposed to sell. Oh yeah, because you know they day. were getting ready. I mean, if they if they were smart, they probably ordered at least a couple months ahead of time for their products. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean to keep their stock mm-hmm. up. But yeah. it also depends on the artists and stuff. But once again, yeah. like you said, they're gonna have to sell anyway in order to be able to be artists, and that's mm-hmm. once again what what I'm I'm hoping that we, we do better so that these artists and people can get out there because you can't you know musicians mm-hmm. too musicians are at a total standstill like my my friend talked about it i think it was his first time back on any kind of stage in like three months and it was at some random bar while the <laughs> for the one week that we had the bars open because now we're closed again so you can't do it anymore oh let me go charge my laptop for it dies on us Ooh. yeah no worries man i i get the feel i had to turn the camera on and off because it, it, I think it overheats. I don't know, man. It's it's having issues, that's for sure. It's that old one, though, not the new one. I don't um, use the new one yet so, for the stream. I don't know why. Let's see here. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, Bananas. I don't know. Oh, yeah. So they're doing the virtual cons. And uh, did you see some of the uh, those NECA toys that are coming out for the yeah. exclusives? Yeah, we had been talking about those, I think, last week, too, oh. about the NECA toys. Some of those look really awesome. Uh, they have a Gremlins one coming out, which was the Olympics one. Uh, I guess it was a promo art back in the the eighties because it was the Los Angeles Olympics, and the poster was the Gremlin kind of wearing like the torch, and he had the swimming trunks with like the goggles and the little flippers. 
and uh, so NECA came out with the figure for that. And so it looks pretty cool. I've seen some people already find him already and post up some toy photography of it. Um, so that, that was pretty cool. The other ones that I'm kind of excited for was the Predator 2, because I guess it's the 30th anniversary this year of uh, the Predator 2 movie. Okay. So they're doing exclusive as well, and they have a... Uh, they're calling it the Predator 2 Demon Hunter. Uh, it's usually called the City Hunter, but they're calling him the, di- the Demon Hunter for this version. And it's uh, all dipped in like a clear plastic resin. And then they have um, kind of gave him like that, uh, you know, that visible look. And then they put lightning kind of paint on it. And then lightning paint on his accessories, like his smart disc, his combi stick, um, some other stuff here. Um, even his head was all you know lightened up and then what's really cool <laughs> for box collectors was that when you open up the window box the uh, box actually flashes inside okay. so it looks like some lightning in the box <laughs> i thought that was pretty awesome that is dope that's nice uh, I, they put they a lot of work a... into the toys nowadays because they're for adults because oh <laughs> well, they're for well, us though <laughs> i know well i think that that and it's just that and then technology the, the engineer yeah the engineering and technology and the articulation they just 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 came out with a new technology for toys um and are called, it's like a photorealistic um way they can get now to make the sculpts look even more you know like the well, i mean they've had yeah and i mean they've had certain ones like that they just weren't like producible in an affordable way no so yeah. like oh, nah, even at the cons certain now, ones yeah. you could go in and like get a uh three-dimensional scan where they would literally mm-hmm. like yeah. Yeah, and that would get pretty decent results in the higher level pretty ones, pretty obviously. Yeah. Right, and so that was the I thing guess. is like it was like we can't make these and charge anything less than five or six hundred dollars <laughs> for them. It's like yeah. okay, yeah, we got to wait until this but, technology is like all right. Now we'll charge fifty or sixty dollars for this figurine, yeah. and that'll be an acceptable price for and people so like us. I guess us. they're getting better at it now. Oh, yeah, they're definitely they're and they're, they're so cool. Now. Did you? Um, I think you. Articulation too is just crazy. Yeah, and toys. and the that toy stuff. Photography, is, man. The toy photography. Go look at it. It's the amazing. Three, the 3D modeling stuff, and I mean, they've been once again going at it, but the 3D modeling stuff really made the difference in that, oh, and the yeah. 3D printing stuff as well. I'm sure made a huge difference in the creation of some of this kind of like action figures. I mean, at a, yeah, man. At a large I, I follow some of these people now on on Instagram, and their photography of the toys is just so awesome. They like they the diorama, some of them build, and everything to make the scene just like amazing. Oh, yeah. And some of these guys even uh, follow, you know, it, it's Photoshop. Awesome. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they usually do. They do a bunch of stuff with them toys. <laughs> they they it's always been a thing because I was into figurines back in the day for anime stuff, not for like comics, but that you would have like anime figurines and stuff coming in and. Mm-hmm. Once again, it, a lot of those things were about well, like the detail. Back then. <laughs> oh yeah, and they've had Japan's had quality figurines and anime stuff for a while. Quite a while. while. They were Granted, they were pricey, things, man. I mean, it was is, it wasn't like it wasn't like they were cheap though. You know what I mean? You paid good money for no, some no, of those no. statues from oh, Japan. Oh my gosh, man! Some of the statues because I was wanting to buy a Cowboy yeah. Bebop statue. Just oh yeah, the Faye Valentine. And they're making a new one right now, and oh my gosh, it's probably going to be like $400. I'm like, mm, nope, I'm out. <laughs> Told you, man, and that's that's what they used to cost, yeah, from Japan. So because they're usually back out there, once again, they're like sculptures. They're done by hand a lot of the time or done by – Hand-painted. Mm-hmm. And it's good stuff. I mean, it's not like it's not worth it. It's just, once again, being affordable for the masses and being profitable for people or or for the people who want it. Mm-hmm. Which, once again, I'm a simple guy, so I like simple ones. Or not even like simple ones, just different simple things. Like, I, I thought it was funny. I think you posted the one about the, uh, the like, 28-inch Sentinel or whatever. Oh, was that my yet? gosh, bro. That thing is freaking amazing. It looks great. The- they uh let me tell you a little bit about this project so it's actually uh, the way they're doing it and they already uh did their um they they surpassed their uh, project but anyways it's uh, kind of like a kickstarter kind of way they're doing it and uh it's expensive though i was like uh, 350 is what they want for it but it's a 26.6 inch figure and um it's uh i guess they wanted six thousand people to back it so that they can go ahead and accomplish it and i think this was just what two days ago i posted that and they they already got all six thousand people to back it um yeah because honestly a 300 dollars just for, uh... got their first reward actually there's thir- their second reward backed up because i think they're at eight thousand now um and um now it, it comes with a different head with like a battle damaged head and then it comes with a battle damaged hand and then um 
something else. They said they were supposed to come out with something else with it. But the more uh, the next thou every thousand, right every time it goes the up, more, they'll do more, um, yeah. they'll they'll add something else to it. But uh, I'm, I don't know. Let's I'm, I'm we're gonna Sounds go cool. for maybe I don't know. 13,000? No, I don't know. Maybe more than that. I'm going to say 15,000. It could definitely be. The X-Men an- anime, not anime, X-Men animated series was one of the better comic book animated series of all times. Like, people mm-hmm. will al- always, like, love Batman and hold to the high regard, but as far as, like, comic book accuracy, there nobody beat X-Men. X-Men stole stories from the X-Men comic. Like, Oh, yeah. Some of them panel for panel, you know what I mean? They do. I mean, it's an amazing, yeah. That's, yeah. And then that intro. <laughs> oh, dude, <laughs> there is intro. no <laughs> intro the better intro, than like, the. Mm, I, you like I said, that is actually written by an actual rock band. That was yeah, written by the I writer from what well, I think it's one Slash, of the members it was, from uh, Eros. Slash, wasn't it? I don't think it's Slash. I it Slash. I, 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 it's not. Slash. I don't think it's Slash. Uh. It is. Maybe he did something else. Maybe it was the Power Rangers. I don't know. We'll see. I'm. I'm gotta remember. All right. I gotta say, X Men animated series. Who wrote the intro song? Maybe just played the intro song. It is. He is Ron Wasserman. Yeah. Also known as Aaron Waters in the Mighty Raw. Hmm, okay, okay. Um, Enrique. He's a member of the band Fisher. And look, oh, it looks like we got a comment. Oh, us. shoot. Enrique said, um, he's just saying what we're talking about today, and uh, he says he's got a lot of Star Wars figures. Oh, I nice. just started collecting some Star Wars figures, too. I, oh, uh, man. I got, uh, Star Wars is a I, huge I don't know if collectibles seen, but market. But I've looked at the new, um, the new Black Series Hasbro ones that they're coming out with. They, uh, no. They're redesigning some of the boxes because they're, you know, they're trying to appeal to the box yeah. collector well, as well. But uh, the, new, uh, the new ones are coming out. I pre-ordered uh, an Ahsoka one. Um, oh, the Mandalorian wow. one with the Berserker armor, and then I did the uh, Sabine, I think, from Star Wars Rebels. Um, so I, I pre-ordered those ones, and then I also have a little baby Yoda, a black series. <laughs> it's literally like this small. Um, and then I have um, now the um, Jedi version of um, Raven, and also just the regular version of Mando with just the regular armor that he's wearing. Yeah, um, they're really awesome figures. Like they, they look, you know, really awesome. Um, I mean, but I seen yeah some of this cool stuff that they're doing with uh, Hasbro now. Some of the new releases, just trying to change the box designs. Um, because before they were just kind of playing with the number on the side, and now they're actually putting some nice um, art on the side yeah. with the character. Um, also too, if you collect the whole like series of the uh, that run, uh, it actually makes a picture. You know, right, like, that which is together. funny because that so should be that pretty way. Cool. Yeah. Because those things, yeah. it gives you, one, it's a great marketing strategy. Like, there's no beating that yeah. marketing. Uh, dude, the collectibles for Star Wars is amazingly huge. Like, it obviously, oh it's been gosh, around man. since the Star 70s. Migos, Le- Legos, <laughs> custom Death Stars and stuff. Like, or not custom, but huge Death Star, act- not actual size, but large scale modeling. It was amazing kind of stuff that they, they have out there. And I... I it's one of those things that I'm afraid to get into because I'm already into so much stuff that I don't know if I can afford oh gosh, to get man. into yeah, it again. Yeah, stay away. Because uh, I, I, uh, they I said people tell me is like, how do you keep your kids from doing drugs? It's like, get them into comics and collectibles. Yeah. They will stay, never stay, have stay money away. for drugs. Stay away, no, just stay away. Yeah, it's addicting, <laughs> man. It's addicting. Um, like I said, I, I have already like three. Uh, more black series on the way uh, they don't come out until october but still um i already got them on order um i have some i'm excited for the new san diego comic-con exclusive for NECA also as well they're doing an alien one they're doing also did you see the teenage ninja turtles one with the 1990 yeah. uh band <laughs> concert live concert um uh, those those things look horrifyingly but i want it so but bad. i want it so <laughs> bad <laughs> i uh i have but not so seen cool. that they one even come with um because the, some they've been doing some of the other live action turtles as well and those things look freaking awesome 
Um, I did actually just picked up the two pack with Casey Jones and Raphael with his trench coat. He's wearing the little hat, and uh, Casey's got all his baseball bats and everything, and it's awesome. But uh, they look so great, like they look like the the real thing from the movies. Like it's just like I, you know, we don't. They never did this before, and it's like NECA's is like, we know what you want. We're gonna do this <laughs> for you guys, and they're doing that one, and they're doing the cartoon version uh, turtles as well. Um, so those ones are pretty cool as well. But I, I like the live action version; it's just way cooler. But uh, yeah, the the concert ones are pretty awesome. They come with a retractable jaw now. The other ones did; they were just uh, imposed. Okay. Um, so that was <laughs> that was kind of funny. I guess if you want to make him like scream like he's uh, right, yeah, or see, something like that's that. funny. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it it looked awesome. The box is really cool. You pull it out. Uh, it comes with a little kind of diorama in the background, so it looks like they're on a, a stage uh, and everything. And uh, yeah, they they're really going for. They're, I think they're doing a good job. I don't think this is for every collector because I have seen some people say this is trash. It looks like crap. But I have seen some people say this is the best thing ever. And I remember when I was six years old, seven, eight years old, and my mother took me to that concert mm -hmm. and i was oh i love the shit out of it <laughs> so you know there, there's people out there that are gonna love this this uh exclusive yeah you know, which i think is what exclusive should be you know it shouldn't be some you know it shouldn't be for everyone it should be just something kind of for like i don't know just kind of like this niche kind of thing like you, you would never have thought that a toy company would make the 1990 concert turtles <laughs> right it's pretty funny um, especially so, talking about I mean, it like that though it's funny you mentioned even that concert because i remember talking about that concert series not too long ago with somebody else in a similar oh, really? yeah although they were talking about the earlier run of it because you went to the later run which was in like 99 i think yeah yeah they yeah, went to the earlier run which was like 90 nine i thought no nah, it would have been nine the early early run would have been in like 90 two or three because they had a several tours i want to say 91 because it might have been 91 the movie came, the movie came out in 1990 double check and yeah. uh i know i know really that they were trying to capitalize because literally this was like the peak of the star wars um yeah you know fandom and um you know and like anything things come back down <laughs> nobody wants turtles no more for a while mm -hmm. and, it's up, they and come back up again up that's all down, it yeah. always is but i guess they were just trying to you know um market on it as fast as they could i could have sworn it came out in 1999 like the year after the movie but maybe yeah maybe it was 92 I mean, coming out of their shells well, there's just several ones i think uh yeah it was come yeah it was called coming out of their shells tour <laughs> yeah that's why i was double checking it 1990 yeah, I thought so. Nineteen ninety. Yep, it was real. It was real close. I think you said they, ninety-one. It was like, ninety, they, but bro, they were so... really trying to capitalize. And then yo, really, and I didn't know this, this, but when I because we just watched the original movies again. <laughs> nice. I picked up the figures, yeah. and I was like, I gotta watch the movies again. Mm -hmm. So uh, we watched the second one. and I was like, it literally came out a year after. Mm -hmm. They and, were quick. Uh, they were like, and for movies back then, that means they would have started filming like right after the other one hit box office. Mm -hmm. Well, I did some little bit of fact, well, not fact checking, but did a little history uh, on the movie. And uh, so when the first movie came out, and when I watched it now, it is kind of dark. It is mm -hmm. a really dark movie. They even kill Shredder in yep, the freaking at the end. dumpster thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now that I think about it as a kid, I didn't really notice that, and I didn't really care for it. I didn't think of it as too Nobody talks, because as a kid, you're just like, well, yeah, I mean, they, you don't even think about I mean, it him being like, dead. You're he's like, a yeah. bad guy. He's done he's for. squished. Boom, okay. But yep, there's bye. no blood or nothing. Right, that's the thing. It's like, you don't see him die, so you're like, oh, well, he's just gone. Like as a kid, but, um, you know, like I said, it's one of so those adult the kid parents, logic things. They just didn't like it. They 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 thought it was too dark for their kids. They they really did not like the first film, so the producers had to kind of go a little bit easier on the second one. And uh, I know Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird were not liking it at all because I think what they originally wanted to do was do the Baxter villain next with his right. little um, mousetrap uh, robots. And uh, that was supposed to be the next villain. And Shredder was actually never even supposed to come back. He was supposed to stay dead in the first film. Right. But um, yeah, because of the way they did it, they try to make it more kind of friendlier, more kiddish kind of movie. I, and I think it even got a PG-13 rating on the, the first movie. It might have, yeah. Look at it, again. It, it probably uh, does, yeah, honestly. The first one was PG. And then, too, if you think about it, the first one really is like more about – teenagers and it the first one's really more home for the comic like the original comic 
And I think that's just not what the kids or the parents are expecting because, you know, they they seen this 1980s cartoon to be their dude. Right. Like, they're expecting know, it to be stuff. all. But now they see these kids stealing over here, vandalizing, and they're all trying to do drugs and everything like this is not for my kid. He's only eight years old. <laughs> Wrong. Right. But, uh, I mean, so they, they changed a lot. I, and then I guess Casey Jones is another thing they had to change because they the mask, they said, was too – like scary, they said. I think and by that, so that time it would have been, re- but it would have been one. related to like Friday the Thirteenth at that time. Yeah, and mm-hmm. even now and you sometimes get that. The third one, but in the third one he didn't even have the mask. He was just like I said, it's the mask head. that was the thing. It wasn't Casey. Yeah, it was the no, mask. No, no. But no, exactly. I definitely get it. Uh, and speaking of, we're coming up on uh, time. Yeah. But uh, is there anything that you had that I think I thought was coming up or? There I think was, that was it, just the game. There was something that, that I was know. thinking of coming up. Uh, that was right. The God of High School had just come out this last week. The next episode will come out tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah, so wait, it, did the first episode just come out? It uh, came out last week, so Sunday. Or Monday. Oh, last, this oh, last okay, Monday, okay. yeah. Okay. So episode so, two comes thanks. out tomorrow. It'll be did interesting. It? Yeah, yeah. It's all right. Did you like it? Mm, it? I don't think it did justice to what the comic did but once again things sometimes have to change for the medium you're using and so yeah, i i can kind of understand it uh, the other thing is it's the first episode and i liked it right it was good it just wasn't as good as i wanted it to be right because i really like okay. the 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 uh, manga and i want it to do well so i want it to be on a similar level of anime now the animation looks really good in my opinion there's a couple of parts where it's a little uh, jerky or stretched, but that might have just been Crunchyroll because Crunchyroll does that sometimes to me. <laughs> yeah, uh, but other but otherwise, it was just some of the pacing stuff for how I felt the show was supposed to be. Uh, otherwise, it was pretty cool. There was some like just random stuff they threw in. Like I said, that wasn't like in the manga at all. Changed the order of some stuff, but like it was cool. I liked the vibe. It it had its own energy. You know what I mean? And now what else? Yeah, yeah. New coming out? Okay, ReZero okay. restarted its new season, but that Which was uh, ReZero. Oh, okay. There's another Ooh, anime. I guess it's yet. coming back here soon. What's that? I was reincarnated the slime. Oh yes. <laughs> the thing is, is I yeah, and, yet. and I the I my problem is <laughs> oh dude no it's based on a uh, novel right yeah That's novel, right. Uh, and the messed up part is they were they unlike Overlord which I don't I think you've seen Overlord maybe maybe I've not seen the first episode yeah. Um, I, it was once again, okay, he's just, similar to uh, One Punch Man. It's not a character that has any stakes. It's always a character about the side characters. Uh, yeah. Mob Psycho 100 is almost exactly the same. I ended up watching it for my reaction series, Blind. And it's very similar. That's the other series by uh, the author of One Punch Man. It, the characters aren't necessarily similar, just the the idea that the, the main character doesn't really have any threats in a way. Like, there's no one out there that's just going to come up and beat him up or some shit. Uh, mm-hmm. Whereas, like, Slime is more of an isekai. Slime starts that way and changes a little bit. You know what I mean? It's like, ah, you got s- s- strong Slime Ramiru until slime, you meet. Slime went from, like, here to here, and then it went. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah, it was, oh my god! And then later you go back down, which is slime crazy. Slime to Dragon Ball Z now. <laughs> it, it's very much uh, what I will say, and that's why I think you'll like God of High School. Is God of High School is one of those uh, Dragon Ball Z kind of style of show, but not in the style of Dragon Ball Z where it's this long drawn out plot or like these long charging they have to yeah that's the no no, no. They have to transform <laughs> no that that is not what gohs is about but it is about that kind of like one tournament the tournament idea of, of dragon ball z is very heavily kind of incorporated into god of high school hmm. um and then the fighting right the the martial techniques but also i, I actually think that uh, God of High School does fighting better than Dragon Ball Z by far, because it okay. it does martial arts and superpowers, and it does a way okay. of balancing okay. them that um, that Dragon Ball Z basically gave up on after Dragon Ball. Like you don't get any more martial arts techniques after Dragon Ball Z, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. You only get s- special 
beam techniques and chi fusing techniques. You know what I mean? After uh, the only exception being they they use this, but that's also like a special technique, not a martial art technique. The sealing uh, technique. Uh, man, I can never remember. I can always remember the name, just not on days like this where I didn't sleep a lot. Uh, <laughs> it's the one where they seal them in the jar from Master Roshi. Oh yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that 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 kind of technique, and it's so it it does a really good job on that. I'm sure it isn't going to be as iconic anyway, but it does a good job on fighting. Like it's a it's about fighting, and it does a good job at it. Okay. At least the manga. We'll see if the anime lives up to the manga. <laughs> All right. Well, other than that, then I guess that was pretty much it, then. Yeah, I think that is. Uh, we're, we're pretty much at an hour two, so that kind of our standard time here. Uh, just uh, not that much going on in the world once again. I mean, there's things, yeah. always yeah. things, but we're waiting for some some news to drop of like, all right, here's the new movies coming out, or we have some ideas of stuff, and when we get it, we'll tell you. But uh, thank you everyone <laughs> for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time on Comic Combos. Yeah, have a good one.